uh, Kanban. So when you talk about combining Scrum and Kanban, one of the first things people think about is Scrum Ban, uh, which is really you know using the prescriptive nature of Scrum to be agile and using the process improvement of Kanban to allow the team to, to constantly improve. I think originally it was designed uh, to help you transition from Scrum to Kanban, so level zero uh, was Scrum and level three was Kanban. But more so these days, you know, as it's uh, as it raises here, uh, it's, it's used maybe Kanban is used as a lens through which Scrum teams can do you understand continuously improve their work. And again, there's a reference there to Scrum Ban. I guess one of the risks I've seen with, with Scrum Ban is maybe taking mixing and matching, taking bits and pieces again uh, without, let's say, fully understanding the dependencies between them and the consequences. Another way to look at another kind of support. For combining Scrum with Kanban is the uh, the Kanban guide for Scrum teams, which comes from Scrum.org, and um, you know this this uh, is for Scrum teams to 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 get maximum benefit from Kanban and flow practices. It involves you know the workflow definition and optimization from a Kanban uh, within the Scrum team within Scrum, um, and uh, it's very much aligned with that uh, previous guide I mentioned for Kanban. Kanban guide, the flow strategy. Um, so it's really about taking that definition of Kanban, um, that essential elements of Kanban, and then fitting that within a Scrum framework. Um, for example, talking about how that flow-based approach affects your daily Scrums, affects your retros, your planning, and so on, um, to cover these kind of core practices within a Scrum framework. So as such, again, it's a very kind of useful reference in terms of combination of Scrum with uh, Canva. Um, uh, in terms then of, of issues with, with those combinations, um, you know, you can have, you know, what I observed is, you know, significant variations in effectiveness of these hybrids depending on the context. And that very much depends on the knowledge of the, of the team, the maturity level that they're at, the level of collaboration that exists or is uh, desired, you know, within the team. So I see everything from a poor uh, a hybrid to a very good one. So a poor one being quite commonly seen, unfortunately, is, is a Scrum board migrating to a Kanban board. So hey, we're we're using Scrum with Kanban, but that Kanban board is simply a a sequential visualization of the activities, uh, but it doesn't have whip limits or you're not managing flow and so on. Um, at the other end of the scale, uh, you could be embracing the flow based. And all of the continuous improvement of Kanban, and you know, employing stronger and stronger uh, lean practices within that, then to good effect. You know, for example, answering problem solving, theory constraints. You know, uh, getting into you know, uh, probabilistic forecasting. You know, and so on. In other words, getting deeper and deeper into lean, and using that within uh, context of a hybrid. Um, so one of the fundamental problems, you know, I'm seeing is insufficient understanding of lean and Kanban. And how to use it for continuous improvement, you know, within that Scrum framework. Um, and from a test-specific point of view, um, you know, when Agile was originally being adopted in many organizations, you know, um, I saw a lot of fear on the part of test testers. I saw test testers coming kind of dragging their heels a bit in relation to uh, uh, being engaged with um, this kind of uh, evolution as such, this kind of uh, change. Um, as a result, then, that, that creates risks and issues around coming up with an appropriate test strategy and has impacts on quality. Test, test, testers and testing should be proactive and, and very much driving uh, the hybrid adoption rather than taking a, a back seat. Um, again, that's, that's, a, that's an issue and a concern. 